for us on Station 1. Well, Richard is a really talented chef, and that's been recognised, and the boys and girls know that he's at the top of his trade. Uh, and it's fascinating for them to see quite what he can deliver with the same basic resources that they've got, uh, and to really make them stretch themselves and try and push the edge. But actually, OK, he may be good on television, but they've been doing this for a lot longer than he can, and they've got some really good ingredients they can do some great stuff with. All that stuff around the front line, if the guy doesn't want to eat it. So I need you know, what I want to do is to plagiarise all the recipes you guys have got here. We get them out on the web and send them out to the boys and girls in the uh, patrol bases tomorrow. Yeah. And say, have, have you thought about this? Because they've got all this. Jump ahead. So we're doing hot main course, nice. hot dessert. We're also going to do three or a selection of three or four nice desserts as well, different ones, just to show what you can do, hopefully, with these ingredients. So this is a slightly easier competition than what you're doing than what the guys are doing. Why? Because they're actually doing 20 portions of hot. 20 portions of sweets. Oh, don't give me that. I was told to do 10. You want me to do 20? I can, give me, I can do 20. We'll let him off. <laughs> we'll let him off for today. So, are you ready for a hard Absolutely. Start? Yeah, yeah, we're good. Okay. We're good. Right. Ready, ready, steady, ready, steady. Go. Thank you. All right. Okay, so I'm going to um, knock up a little bit of bread, first of all. So, um, obviously, lots of carbohydrates. Um, it's a great source of carbs um, and it's a great way to fill you up as well. Richard Phillips, he was cooking with ORP, which is our um, operational dried rations, tinned rations, and he had a, uh, a select amount of uh, fresh rations. Yeah, the guys obviously have a challenge, um, and what I would imagine is their, their biggest challenge for cooking for the troops would be um, just some variety. Uh, getting out of a rut, the, the same thing every day. Um, it's, if it's very, there's lots of tin tomatoes, chocolate bars, rice, pasta. So really trying to um, lift up spirits, I'd imagine, after a day out there, um, fighting for our country, and they come back um, to, be, to be able to have something which maybe has a reflection of home, lift their spirits, and can work for them. And that's really important that it gives them protein, energy, and all the, everything they need to be out there for a physical job. So, Oh, you got him helping you, have you, Dan? You got him helping you. Uh, working with Richard Phillips today, I learned that e even celebrity chefs, that they're not the be all and end all. That, you know, there's always room for improvement and room for learning. Um, I learned to maybe when I get back to my field unit, I stay a lot calmer. He was really calm, really chilled out. Well, it's a lot of tins, it's a lot of packets, it's a lot of air dry produce. So it's hugely different to what we would normally do. You know, one of my restaurants, the average spend is about £150 a head. So people spend a lot of money. So I had the luxury um, of not only having a lot of chefs around me, but I also had the luxury of buying the best ingredients. So this today's going to be a big challenge to ensure that um, good food can be made and taste good with rations. I always say any chef can make caviar for a while, not to taste good. You have to do an awful lot with it. You get a chef in the troops in, a, in, you know, in this kind of environment and using cheaper cuts of meat, slower cooked cuts of meat, tin foods. That's going to show if a chef can actually cook because you've actually got to bring out the flavours, the natural flavours, and all these ingredients. Um, are we ready? You've got one more Cornell and then uh, we're good. Let's say that early. You get bonus points being early. Okay, we have service with Richard. Richard is now just going to go talking through what he's actually produced, which I've never seen do things quite impressive. Right, hi everyone. Um, so what have we done? Uh, let's start off with over here. We've made a um, chicken, mushroom uh, and cabbage pie. We, uh, we made a very classical um, bechamel. I'm sure you've all heard of a bechamel. That's bound it uh, with the mushrooms, the chicken, 
uh, if you can call it that. It didn't taste much, much like chicken today. Um, a little bit of dry tarragon in there, garlic, just get all those flavours, and a little bit of, well, we would have used stock, but we used the soup, let down very well. Um, and then just we made a, a very quick, simple, short cross pastry to go on top. Ideally, you'd use puff pastry. We don't have that sort of time. So that's there. Uh, boulanger and potatoes, very classical, very simple, and something that the guys hopefully will be able to prepare well in advance. Um, fried down onions, sweated down, caramelised. Uh, I've got some lemon thyme in there. Um, then you slice potatoes very thinly, slice them on top, and then again you'd use stock, however we've used soup that we had there. Moving on to the next savoury, two different varieties of bread, um, a little uh, thyme whipped butter to go with it. Salted butter works really well. Um, so to, uh, we've got basil and tomato bread, and we've got potato, uh, new potato and rosemary bread. On to desserts, very, very sort of traditional but nice. Porridge oats were in there, so we used the porridge oats for a topping for a lovely blackberry and apple crumble. Um, what more did you say? Very simple, straightforward, it is what it is, really. Um, and then three different desserts over here. Well, well the crumbles there. Um, and then we've got a sable biscuit. So we made a, a sweet sable biscuit. You, um, that's the French word for shortbread um, or sand. So that's the colour it should be. Very brittle, very tender. Um, underneath that, we've got a, a creme patisserie, very classic creme pat. Soft fruits, a little praline. So where you've got these bags here of all the nuts, We've taken the nuts out of this and we've made a little praline from that. So you make a caramel, add the nuts, let it cool down, batter it, that goes on top. And then we've um, done a little bit of candied fruits. So grated lemon, grated lime, a little bit of caster sugar and you put it above the heat and it goes, crystallises and has a lovely um, piquant sort of citrusy flavour to it. Very quick, simple tart, peach tart, uh, tin peaches. We've used the creme pat, a little bit of lime going through that. Peaches on top, we add some apricot jam, glaze of apricot jam, a lime creme for, uh, cream, soured cream. So we, we've soured that down a little bit, like it, so it's more like a creme fraiche. That goes on top. Custard there to go with that, and raspberry souffle is coming out <laughs> in a moment, we hope. So that's what we've done. So please dig in, try, and see what you think. Think a little bit at home. Um, so I would tend to want something with lots of protein in it, carbohydrates, hopefully energised, slow release for the following day. And I've also try to think for the chefs, because they obviously, they get inundated probably very quickly by an awful lot of people. So they need things which they can prepare, hopefully in advance, and then pre-cook, yeah. but then just, okay, everyone's coming at six o'clock, it goes in at half past five, warms through, and it's served. Uh, can't keep people waiting. So it's, I would imagine, and I'm putting, trying to put myself in these guys' shoes, there's an awful lot they have to think about. Um.